Robin Bremer is a best-selling author, a publishing coach, and a business developer. She has written over 50 books and published and promoted many other authors' books to the bestseller's status. She got her start by paying almost $2,000 to publish her first book. She also had to pay $12 a book and buy a box of books. This is the same story of many other authors who just paid too much. After publishing her own books for years, her passion is to help other authors be successful in writing, publishing, and promoting without emptying their wallet or purse. She does this through her podcast called Self-Publishing Bestseller, Hints, Tips, and Interviews. To learn more or to start the publishing process of your own book, go to www.robinbremer.net. That's R-O-B-I-N-B-R-E-M-E-R dot net. Welcome to It's Supernatural with Robin Show, where we share personal experiences and scriptures on how you can walk in the supernatural. The show is mixed with off-grid living, toxic-free lifestyle, and a touch of politics. Join our host today for today's podcast, and remember, it's natural to be supernatural. stuff going on in the world today it's really hard to have peace and this is something that really will give you peace once you grasp onto it and this is something that's going to be in my new book I kind of condensed and put a couple chapters pieces from different chapters together so that I could share with you something simple about how to take captive uh, your thoughts and bring them to the obedience of Christ and bring that to the communion table which this information was life-changing for me and I'm still growing in this that's why I'm writing that book on communion and why it's taking so long but um, basically 2 Corinthians 10 5 says cast down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ okay now we know that's true and most of us are taught when we have a bad thought to take it captive and say okay um, like for example the thought comes you start you wake up you feel really miserable really uh, terrible you have a sore throat so the first thought is oh I'm getting the flu because the flu is going around so the first thought is I'm getting the flu then the devil what he does is he takes you through his little flip chart like, this is notes I still have to do with my books but through a flip chart like oh okay look at here um, you were at uh, Cracker Barrel the other day and that waitress was sneezing and snotting all over her so, you know, you deserve to have the flu. You should have the flu. And, oh, look here. Um, your Aunt Susie, you know, you just visited her the other day. She just died of the flu. Oh, oh, and you heard on TV, take this medicine and it'll do better with the flu. And, oh, look here. Oops. Here are the symptoms of the flu. So what the devil does is he uses your unconscious mind and the neural pathways that you have already created of things that have happened in your history, things that you have seen, things that you have experienced, uh, things that you've heard. So that's why testimonies, you have to really watch when you give a testimony because when you start giving details of in a testimony, it starts making that available to everybody else and then when they have a symptom, they're gonna start thinking that. That's why I stopped watching TV 20 years ago. I just rent movies. And that's it because I don't want any suggesting to me. And TV is all about suggesting. Big Pharma wants to get your money so they tell you what symptoms to look for and what medicine to ask your doctor for. So anyway, so the devil, what he does is he goes through this flip chart and he starts giving you all these thoughts, all these ideas, all these confirmations of why you deserve to have the flu. You deserve to have the flu because, well, you haven't been taking care of yourself. Um, you haven't exercised. You haven't been, you're even eating a lot of sugar. Uh, and you've been around people who have the flu, you went to Walmart, you put your hands in the cart, you came out to Walmart, you stuck your finger up your nose or in your mouth, you deserve to have the flu. Okay, so he's accusing you. Okay, he's taking your experiences, what you hear, see, uh, and experience, and he's taking those experiences and, and those pathways that you've already created, so it's like a trigger, like, oh no, I'm getting the flu. So you begin to think about the flu, you begin to think about the symptoms, you, you, you normally, if you're already a Christian, you would say, take the thought captive. Okay, uh, by the stripes of Jesus, I have been healed. So you quote that scripture. 
but I don't think that's what re really means taking it captive. What that's doing is quoting a scripture. Now, when you take the thought, it means, okay, first of all, the devil is giving you symptoms and showing you things and saying, oh, this has got to be the flu because you did this, this, this. You deserve to have the flu. It's giving you a judgment, basically. And by taking it captive, what you have to do is you have to walk it to the cross. And this is so cool because we think just the opposite. Now, walking it to the cross means everything on this earth that leads to death is from the devil. Everything that leads to life is from God. So, so you take your thought and you take it all the way down the road to death. Okay. Oh, my goodness. That's right. I did talk to Aunt Susie the other day. and She has the flu. You're right. Oh, yes, I got sneezed on in church. You're right. I, I could have the flu from that. Yeah, I stuck my finger up my nose after I was visited Walmart. Yeah, uh, you're right. I've been eating sugar. Yeah, you're right. I haven't been taking care of my body. Yeah, you're right. Okay, then you take that those thoughts. You follow all of those thoughts all the way to, it, it's like a mind map. Your thought is, I got the flu. I got these symptoms. So all the bad thoughts that you are thinking, oh, no, I got the flu. I'm this age. It, so many statistics say that people who have the flu die. Okay, death. It ends in death. You take all those thoughts till, they, till they're dead, till you end up in death. Death. Then you say, okay, now, all those thoughts have been, I've thought about them. I brought them into my conscious mind because when they're unconscious, you can't deal with them. You bring them to your conscious mind. You walk them all the way to the cross. Now, they end in death, and you say, okay, now, Jesus justified me see the devil is giving you a judgment he says you deserve to have the flu because according to the cycles and the seasons on the earth according to the fallen man and the nature of man the cycle of death is you get germs viruses infections and you get with somebody who has the flu sneezes on you you get the flu that's the cycle that's the death cycle on the earth but you are not in the death cycle so you say okay I don't receive that judgment I bring it to the cross and Jesus I died in Christ Jesus I was buried not just dead but I was buried in Christ Jesus and I resurrected with Christ Jesus therefore flu is in my history not in my future because you are a new creation and sin leads to death and sickness, disease, poverty, lack, and fear is all the result of sin, the judgment of sin from that the devil put on you. But Jesus already took that judgment. So sin, sickness, disease, poverty, lack, and fear, and everything related to death has no legal right on you. It's just like going to the courts of heaven. And in a way, you're going to the courts of heaven. If you understand about the courts of heaven, you confess and you admit your guilt yes I'm guilty of that yes I'm guilty of that yes I'm guilty I repented I reply apply the blood of Jesus to it and taking captive your thought is just like going to the courts of heaven and you are admitting every of the, all these bad mind map all these thoughts going in all the direction of why you should be sick or why you should be poor or why you should be divorced or why you should be whatever all those thoughts that you take to the very end of those thoughts when there is nowhere else to go because they end in death. You bring those thoughts. You say, yep, you're right. You're right. But my justification is Jesus. His blood bought that health for me. His blood justified me. So you legally have no right to put sickness or disease on me. Okay. So you take it to the cross. You walk it to the cross. And it, it always ends in death. And then after the death, you go to the justification and the righteousness of God that you are. It doesn't matter that you did something stupid last night. It doesn't matter that you got the flu uh, because um, you slept with somebody last night. Or you got the flu because you swore last night. Or you got the flu because you smoked or got high last night. You are justified. The devil has absolutely no right to put that on you because you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Not by your behavior, not by your actions, but by being in Christ Jesus. If you're in this water, everything that is in this water, it's all in it. Okay, you're in Christ Jesus. Okay, you're in him. 
So if he's righteous, you're righteous. You're in him. He's in you. Okay. Okay. So moving on. Um, so, so there, you are justified because you're a dead man. You're in Christ Jesus. You're raised up in Christ Jesus. All things have become new and, uh, dead man can't get any deader. Okay. That's your past. Jesus is your future. Your life is in him. So you judge everything until it comes to the death and then you come to your justification. Now, Let's look at how that relates to communion. Okay, um, communion. Okay, um, in the Old Testament, the blood covered your sins, but it also um, covered the sins that were created in ignorance. Okay, which is um, let's see where is that. But into the second part, the high priest alone went once a year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and the sins of the people committed in ignorance. Okay. So that meant that even though what happened to the people whose sins were committed on purpose and what happened to their conscience, they're, they're, see, when you commit a sin, say you're, say you're, um, I don't know, smoking, a, 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 committing adultery or something, um, uh, Excuse me. Say you're com sorry. I should have held the hand over the mic here. Um, if you were committing a sin, let's say if you were committing adultery. Okay. Now in the olden days, let's say that the the goat was sacrificed because of your sin. Actually, you would be stoned. But let's say uh, uh, maybe that's not a good example because you would have been stoned. But let's say you did you broke one of the Ten Commandments that the Jews had in the Old Covenant. Ten Commandments were for the Jews. Okay. Um, Let's say you broke one of the Ten Commandments mm -hmm. that the Jews had. So, um, you would go and offer a goat or a dove, whatever it called for. But you still would have a guilty conscience. You would still say, oh God, I'm so sorry. I'm so worthless because I committed that sin. You know, you still would have that guilty conscience. Now, what happens is that guilty conscience, every sickness and diseases in our body and all the history of our ancestors' sicknesses and diseases, all that history is in our body and our DNA. And when we go through trauma or we go through strong emotions, they open up, they unzip the DNA, they unzip that sickness, that disease, and pull it out and give it to you. It's like your body is paying, paying for sin, unconscious sin that you feel guilty for, unconsciously even. Okay, so it's there, but and you're feeling guilty. So that brings out sicknesses and diseases is emotions and hate and anger and guilt and shame and condemnation and all that stuff. So what Jesus did in the new covenant, um, in Hebrews 9, 4, uh, how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God cleanse your conscience, okay? And then it goes on to say in 1 John 3, 22, Beloved, if your heart does not condemn you you have confidence toward God and you can have what you ask you're asking to be healed you want to receive the healing that is blood paid for that is legally yours but your conscience is guilty so you bring it under the blood of Jesus I love this this is so awesome okay so you bring it under the blood of Jesus you, you take capture that thought through all the steps until you're justified because you're in Christ Jesus and you take communion Communion has so much life in it, so much power in it. Communion is awesome. I love communion. I love learning about communion. This has been a whole new thing for these last two years, learning about communion. And I am learning so much. It's like my brain, my brain's going tilt. You know, I'm just like going like this. <laughs> I feel like I'm a hyperactive kid because I have so much revelation on communion. And, and it's like I got to get into the words and into this book and, and out there so people's lives can be changed. Because Jesus, uh, God sent Jesus because Jesus was the answer to all things. And when you take communion, the body and the blood of Jesus, you are proclaiming legally that you are in, covered in the blood. You are, you are in Christ and he is dead, risen, and your punishment, your guilt, no longer guilty, has been taken care of. You are the righteousness of God. And communion does that for you. And I probably got off on a sidetrack. Okay. Um, so all sicknesses first comes from your spirit. And then it manifests in your body. Okay. Um, 
do research, do studying about all pharma's doing and what uh, about, uh, I, I'm going to put it in my book. I, I just can't talk about all that now. <laughs> um, anyway, um, it, it manifests in your body because we carry in our DNA all the trauma, all the sicknesses and the diseases fr from our past ancestors. Um, that's why we have to go to the court. The, going to the court of heaven is one way to deal with it. There's different levels of revelation, different, uh, not even like this, it's like this, and some like this, you know, going to the courts of heaven, knowing who you are in Christ, and you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So, um, you, wanna, you want to get rid of that unconscious neural pathways of your history and triggers of things that have happened to you in the past. You want to get rid of trauma because trauma opens the door to sickness and disease. If you have any kind of major sickness in your life, that when you got it diagnosed, look back six months to a year, what traumatic thing happened in your life? That's what triggered and opened that up for you and brought that on you. Now, um, when we come into judgment, saying judgment meaning, oh, um, you're, you got the flu because you didn't eat right, you didn't exercise, you didn't drink enough water, you... Uh, drank out of the same glass with somebody who had the flu. So you are being judged by the devil. So when you come into judgment like that, it means a trial, a contest, a sentence of condemnation, a damnatory judgment, condemnation, punishment, and accusation. That's why grace is so important to understand grace because all these things are what the world does to us and actually what Christians do to each other. And we shouldn't be because the devil's always judging us and making us guilty, shame, and condemnation. Guilt, shame, and condemnation bring us into all of this, cause sickness, disease, death, and poverty, lack, fear, all this stuff going on in the world. It causes this. So learn about grace. I have three books out there, I think, on grace. Learn about grace. I give away books free all the time. Anyway, um, okay, we have passed from death to life. Now, most people except the cycles and the seasons that happen on the earth, which are the death cycle and the fallen nature waiting for the sons of God to mature and to manifest and to judge and say, hey, you know, you're under me now. You don't, you're not weeds. You're not, you're not uh, killing bugs and insects. Um, you are healthy. You're a blessing to me. Okay. Earth is waiting for that because the earth is under death cycles and we have accepted it as normal. We accepted that aging is normal, that we should lose our eyesight, we should get sicknesses and diseases and weak bones, we accepted that um, when certain things happen, certain, th you know, we have accepted this stuff, okay, but we have passed from the death cycle into the life cycle, we have passed from, um, oh, there's so different ways I could go with this, oh, <laughs> I get so excited, um, I can't go there either. Um, okay, so instead, you want to receive the absolute, this is this is what we received, okay? I told you what the death cycle was. This is the life cycle. Um, absolute fullness of life, life active and vigorous. That is abundant life. If you don't have that, you are in the death cycle. I said to God, I said, God, show me whenever my thoughts or my speech or my actions are in the death cycle and produce death uh, and then get help me to get onto life because what we do is we sit in front of a TV and we let the TV brainwash us and in really reality the TV is brainwashing us and things like Facebook and Instagram are created they mess up the neural pathways in your mind and cause you to go from one thing to the other they teach you not to hold your focus and attention on anything they also emit a, a blue light, I think it is. I don't know what kind of light that, that uh, affects your melatonin so you can't sleep and your cortisone and different stuff like that. So it puts you on high stress level. Now, um, my, I have a book that, too, I want to show you real quick that will really uh, help. Let me see where it is. <laughs> I'll be right with you. Okay. This book that I've written, I'm going to go over this in a couple of weeks. I'm going to go over this, the toxics, uh, a toxicity of how the government and pharmaceutical and what they're doing to us. But this talks a little bit about G5 
uh, microwave, all kinds of stuff, uh, the elite, the celebrities and stuff. Um, it, it has just a touch of that stuff in, but mostly what the water and the food and everything is doing to us. So we have to get educated. Now you have to be careful because Google automatically um, and Snoops too automatically will uh, are programmed to pull up stuff that they want to promote the left side, the left, you know, far left instead of truth. So you have to keep digging and digging and digging deep to uh, learn about 5G and how it's killing us, how it'll affect your brain waves like microwave and holding the phone up to your ear. Um, instead, put it in your purse, get one of those covers that I, I uh, promote for one of my uh, sponsors. If you're holding it to your ear instead, or get one of these things where you can speak. Just learn how uh, the um, the metal that they're putting in the air with the spraying with the airplanes, uh, they're releasing that chemical warfare, the, the 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 controlling weather, harp, and now we've learned. I learned about Project Blue Beam, which is interesting. Where uh, hologram um, and and now also they're able to project thoughts into your mind, voices into your head, actually. And I believe all of these uh, gun active shooters have been um, manipulated and brainwashed to do what they did that um, by whoever you bring it to the blood of Jesus and the blood speaks okay the Bible says that the blood speaks what does the blood say hey the blood says as Jesus is what I paid for this person not to get the flu you cannot put the flu on them I paid for it I bought it I redeemed them no Thank you for joining us for today's podcast. If it was a blessing to you, please consider financially supporting us by clicking on the Sponsor This Podcast button. Any links mentioned in this podcast will be listed below along with any affiliate products, services, or partner websites. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your social media site. And remember, it is natural to be supernatural.